In this video, I'm going to use some Orbeez for some creative macro photography. Hello, my name's Stuart Wood and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to do some creative macro photography using Orbeez, or sometimes they're known as Acro Water Beads. So I did a couple of pictures last week and put them onto my Instagram and they proved quite popular. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I did those images with these aqua water beads. So they are most commonly known as Orbeez, that's sometimes referred to as aqua water beads. Basically, essentially what they are is they're little, little balls that you put into water, they expand. And you can use them for um, in vases or decorations. My kids go nuts for these, I don't know why. But for macro subjects, they are very good because they are perfectly round, unlike a water drop that isn't. So we get that perfectly round type ball, an almost dreamy look sometimes if you have your f-stop right open. So in this video, we're going to be using speed lights to light our subjects. Now you can do it without speed lights using long exposure, but I can't do that in this video because it's going to be too long. So if you want to see another video of us doing Orbeez with long exposure and some light painting, let me know in the comments below. Say, I want to see more Orbeez in the comments below and I'll do another video for long exposure and light painting with Orbeez. Now this year I haven't really been doing these setups where I go from the start to finish and it's been requested so I'm going back to doing that so you're going to see the whole setup and in the next video you'll see the retouching of the images. So let's get the camera out of the way. What I want is the light coming up from the bottom of our subject so we're going to use a, a glass vein okay this is from a fish tank and I'm just going to set it up on these these are, these are air dusters I use for cleaning my equipment. For some reason, I never throw away the empty cans because sometimes they can come in quite useful. Let's place that there. Okay. So that's good. So now that that's done, we need a subject. And then I'm going to prop it up like that. I'm going to get another one, just place that behind like that. And of course you've got to wait for these to settle in, they need to just settle into their position. That's roughly how I want it. Now the next thing we need is our all bee. So generally when you get them they'll be in a pack like this. And you just empty them out into this particular one it's one and a half liters of water you wait six hours and they turn out like this now after the six hours you empty the water out and keep them like that the reason i've got water in these is sometimes they get little particles on them when you've left them out and about so i've put water back in so as i'm able to wash them before putting them onto our uh, scene now since we're photographing a still subject we can use our tripod for this so now we've got the camera on the tripod, we're not setting that up because we need the Orbeez in the scene for us to actually set the lights up. So let's get a couple of clear Orbeez out of our container and put them onto our scene. Of course you want to be careful with the water around your equipment, unless of course your equipment's waterproof, mine isn't, so just be careful. Okay, now, I'm going to push this back, it's a little bit too close to the edge. So it's time for us to set the camera up. So first of all, I'm going to frame our camera for the subject. So I've set the camera up in such a way that the front orbe is the one in focus and then you just got one in the background just sitting there playing peekaboo. So the next thing I want to do is set up my wireless trigger. All the items I'm using in this video are down below. If you want to know about the equipment I use for my macro photography, you can see that on my website. So my speed lights, they're just uh, basic Yongno manual speed lights. That's all we're going to be using for this video. So what I want to do is I want to set the f-stop so that this front orbit is completely in focus. So I'm going to do that using live view. So I'm focused right on the front of the orbit. 
And then using my f-stop, I'm going to increase the f-stop until the whole orb is in focus. So the first f-stop I'm going to try is f13. We're going to set the shutter speed up to 1 200th of a second, which is this camera's maximum sync speed for these, light, um, these speed lights. ISO 100, and I'm going to take test shot, and with any luck, it should be completely black. Yep, that's great. Now you won't need to do such a high shutter speed because you won't have video lights on at the time. But the reason I have to have a higher shutter speed is to cut out all these video lights and to ensure that the only light coming is from the speed lights. I've said it before and I'll say it again, I need a bigger studio because the camera is right in the way. Anyway, hopefully you'll see what I'm doing. So the first speed light, I'm gonna turn that on. We're on manual. I'm going to set the speed light to the minimum power and I'm going to place that right underneath our orbits. So that's set, let's do a uh, test shot and I've set my timer to a two second timer because for some reason my triggers are out of sync. The flash goes off after the uh, shutter speed so bin that. And what we're going to do is uh, I've set my camera to a two second timer I'll just press the shutter. To be honest with you, that's looking okay. So let's introduce the second speed light. Again, I'm going to set it to minimum power. These are all manual speed lights, no TTLs. Okay, and I've got to stand out the way for this because I'm going to I'm going to hold it up the top here. Press the shutter speed uh, shutter button. There we go. Now we're getting a, uh, an interesting picture. This piece here is getting in the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shift the whole thing around. Okay, recompose my camera. In fact, I'm going to take it back a little bit. Okay. I'll take another one. Too much is in focus, so I'm going to drop my f-stop down. I'm going to drop it to f7.1. Not much I can do about the flash underneath, because that's already at minimum power. But this one I can hold further away. I don't like the bottom right corner. Okay, that's okay. We can deal with that. We can deal with that in Photoshop. A little bit of cover-up, a little bit of cloning. Um, we'll be okay with that shot. Right, so first of all, I'm going to... Put that light behind me because what I want to do is I want to start gelling our lights. So the bottom light, I'm going to place a blue gel on it. Without the top light, we're only looking at the bottom light. Okay. I'm just going to turn it off. So I can save my battery. So we have blue. Let's do red. So the blue and the red look good. The blue comes out green because of the uh, the leaves, which also has a blue tint to it. The first one I'm going to play with is the blue one underneath, red one on the top light. So what I'm going to do is just literally hold it. What I'm going to do is just move the light around and that's all I'm going to do now is literally just change gels, change the angle of the light. Let's do the red underneath and the blue from the top. Okay, that's all it is. Just move around with the different lights at different positions. That last one I liked, that was okay. So one other thing I want to try and do is I'm going to try shooting down and hopefully it will bounce off the table and up onto the, uh, the subject. Need more power. More power, Scotty! Okay. Let's put a red gel on. 
Now this I have to be careful with. I'm at full power on my flash and it will melt my gel. Ooh. This is where you wish you had uh, helpers or more tripods. Are we ready for this? Oh, look at that. Nice. Again, you don't have to use speed lights if you don't want to. You can use long exposure, but again, if you want to see me do the same thing but with long exposure, let me know in the comments below and I will get that video done. Now, the images you are seeing on screen now have been edited in Lightroom and Photoshop. This is going to be the final result. And if you want to see how that's done, then you have to subscribe and wait for the next video to come out, which is where we're going to be taking these shots of these Orbeez into Lightroom and Photoshop and we'll be editing them for the final result. One more thing before I go, tomorrow is going to be the 18th of March and the photography show is on at the NEC Birmingham in the UK. Now tomorrow I will be at the photography show walking around the floor. I want to test out all these new mirrorless cameras but if you do see me around then stop by, say hello, don't be shy okay. So that's it for this Orbeez creative macro shoot. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of this shoot and are you going to give it a go yourself? I would like to see the results. If so, post them in my Facebook group, which is the Macro World, link in the description below. I'd love to see the results. I wanna thank you for getting to the end of this video. If you did enjoy it, smash that thumbs up button. It does help out the YouTube video and the channel by pushing the video out to more people. But anyway, that's it from me. My name is Stuart Wood, and again, I'll see you on the next video. Again, you don't need to use speed lights I might have to buy some of these feed lights. <laughs> One more thing before I go. Tomorrow, which is the 18th of May. It's not May. The YouTube channel it helps out the YouTube. Oh, oh, oh. Again, I want to thank you for getting to the end of the video. Click subscribe if you haven't done already. Click the thumbs up icon. So that's it for this video. Oh.